Today I want to talk about how God has a purpose for your suffering. And I think it's also human nature, our innate inborn tendency when we're suffering is to try to escape it, fix it, solve it, or heal it. And when we are in it and when it has been grueling and we have been suffering for a very long time, which is something I personally understand, so my heart goes out to you wherever you're at, that suffering can overtake us and we can lose hope, we can lose faith, and we can also lose vision in seeing how God himself doesn't cause evil in the world, but he does allow it, for God is sovereign over all. The word reign is part of sovereign. God does allow these things to happen, to conform our image to Christ, to build us through trials and tribulations, of which Jesus never said we could escape from. If you think about the blind man that Jesus healed in John 9, the disciples ask him what kind of sin he or his family had committed that he was born blind. And Jesus replied saying, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the work of God should be revealed in him. And this can be difficult to comprehend, right? So God allowed this man to be born blind that his power and his glory might be revealed through him in the world. And I believe that there is an opportunity in all of our suffering for God's glory as Christians to be revealed in us to the world. As someone who's been through a tremendous amount of suffering of many different kinds, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, financial, all sorts of trials and tribulations, for a long time, it kind of felt like my entire life was just one giant trial. And it broke me down, but I can see now how God had a purpose even in that. And don't get me wrong, the waiting period can be absolutely challenging. And in it and through it, God is going to reveal all the things that are in our heart that are not of him or for him. So our suffering can become kind of like a mirror in a way that allows God to strip away all the parts of us that need to be removed. So there's less and less of us and more and more of him can come through. Like Romans 8:28 says, For we know that God makes all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his plan. Key word, his plan. I think a lot of us as Christians leave that part out or we may not understand what his plan is. And we generally have a tendency as human beings who have not entirely overcome our flesh to substitute our plan for his plan. But his plan is so much greater than our own individual lives. And recently, when I had a health setback earlier this year, I was just in the depths of suffering and extreme physical pain, something I had developed a very high tolerance to over the years. But this one broke me down again and I found myself just crying out to God and then his peace came upon me and I understood that my suffering was for the greater good. That God had a larger plan I couldn't see the details of or the ending of besides the one in Revelation 21 to 22, which is his true plan, which is when heaven comes down to earth and they combine into one place, the new heaven and new earth, the new Jerusalem, and we rule and reign with him in peace forever. And so when we are working and called towards that plan, eventually God is going to make that suffering work for our good and for the collective good. He's going to turn it around. We may only have a small part in that plan or a very large part or something in between, but the larger the anointing, the larger the crushing is going to be so that God can come through you and there aren't any more impediments. And it can be really, really hard to hear this when we're in a place of suffering. But I believe what God teaches us in those places is to turn to him and rely on his love and his peace and his safety and his security. That through these challenging times, he's teaching us how to rely on him alone and not ourselves or anything of this world. The trouble is we can easily lose faith in the waiting. But even that is part of the process of learning to maintain and hold our faith and grow and mature spiritually, which requires not just being fed on milk, but on meat and spiritual, deeper spiritual truths. 
The Lord had been giving me visions when I was in the depths of my own pain and suffering and darkness again, and I was seeing him, Jesus, King Jesus, in this cosmic chess game with the enemy, with the world. And I'm smiling because it was really amusing to watch and remember that he is infinite amount of steps ahead of the enemy, ahead of humanity, and that neither of those things will ever triumph or reign victorious in the long run over the one who created the entire cosmos. And every time I would see this in the spirit, it would lift my own spirits. Sometimes we can lose sight of the fact of how big our God really is. Our problems, our suffering, and our individual pain, or what's going on in our families, or environments, or countries, can feel so overwhelming because we can't personally solve them or even collectively solve them, but only he can. But I just encourage you to take a few steps back, no matter how much suffering you are in, and remember who our God truly is. And that no matter what you're going through, in the end, he's the one who's going to get the glory. We may not see that play out as we think it should. In fact, we probably won't. It'll probably play out entirely differently. We may not even understand how the suffering we are enduring right now is serving God's greater, larger purpose. And when I was in the depths of my suffering several months ago again, and I was spinning and looking for something or someone in this world to save me, I turned back to God. I asked him what lies I believed about him, and I heard immediately in the spirit, I'll never leave. Sometimes we forget that God is there, or we may be an old wounded patterning that tells us no one loves us and God has abandoned us. Whatever it is, we can take it to God and turn back to him knowing that he will never abandon us. He is always faithful, and that truly in those moments, it's us who have lost our faithfulness but that God is always there to pick up the pieces, to comfort us, to bring us peace and strength, and teach us how to rely on him during those times so that we can best serve him in the ways that we are personally called to in this world, which is going to look a little bit different for everyone. So wherever you're at in that process, friends, I just wanna say God bless you and keep you May you turn to him more and more. May you surrender and release all the parts of yourself that are fighting his spirit so that he can grow and expand within you. That you may serve his eternal purpose as the Holy Spirit overflows and outpours from you like rivers of living water out into this world so we can all together reveal more and more of Christ to those who do not know him yet and reveal his glory in us in these times of trial, showing people that nothing in this world can take away our faith and love in Jesus. I pray many blessings over you, friends. In Jesus' name, amen.